guys, it's week three and welcome back. So we're gonna continue through the books of Acts and today we're gonna talk about Philip and the Ethiopian man. But before we do, we're gonna go ahead and get into worship, so stay tuned. Hi, it's Auntie Lani, and it's craft time. Today, you will need eight sheets of paper, some tape, and some markers or crayons, whatever you have. Go and get your stuff and meet me right back here. See you in a bit.
this week we are going to make a frisbee with paper. I'll show you how to fold it. We'll need to make eight pieces and then we're going to take them together. Are you ready? All right, I'm ready. Let's get ready to fold. Okay, I'm going to take one corner of the paper and fold it to the other side to make a triangle at the top. Okay, can you see that? Then you're going to take the tip of the triangle and you're going to fold it to the bottom corner. Of your paper. So your paper should look like this now. And now we're going to make it look like a square. So you're going to take this side and you're going to fold it in right up to the bottom of the triangle. So your paper should look like this now. Now you have a square. Now we're going to take your paper and we're going to make it into another triangle. Okay, so now your paper should look like this. Get your paper triangle and you're going to fold it in half one more time. Right, so now your paper should look like this. You're going to open it up. You're going to take Make sure the open side is pointing towards you, facing you, and you're going to take the paper, the corner on your right side, and you're going to fold it up to the middle. It might be a little hard, so if you need help, ask your parents. Okay, so now it should look like this. And you're going to get your paper, you're going to fold it over one more time. Take this outside edge on this side, see the side on your left side, and fold it over. And we're going to tuck this paper in right over here. That and then tuck it right in. Okay, and then it'll look like this. So we gotta make seven more. You ready? Okay, let's go. Show you again. Take the top corner of the paper, fold that down to make a triangle. Take the tip of your triangle, fold it down to the bottom of the paper. Take this side of your paper now and fold it in to make a square. Okay, so you see that? Took this paper and then you folded it in. Now it's a square. And now we're gonna fold it in half to make another triangle. Fold 
then in half one more time. Okay, and then make sure the paper is op the open side is facing you. I'm gonna take that outer tip. Fold it up right onto the center of that paper. Then you're going to roll it over. Bring this outside paper in and tuck it into the hole again. That's two. Good. There. 
Look, you got your frisbee. Now we're going to take the tape to make sure it stays together. So on all the places, uh-oh, Auntie's tape is hard to rip. So in all the places where we stuck them in, we're going to put a tape on the one side, flip it over, and put a tape on the back side. Okay, find the next place where you tucked it in, put a tape. on that back side and keep going all the way around so you take down all the places where we tuck them in. Make sure you take the front and the back side.
great. That was the last place. So yours should look like this. Pretty cool frisbee you made there. Great. Now we're going to take our markers and we're going to go around our frisbee. So you have to write carefully so you don't run out of space. And we're going to write the... for cap off because I'm just going to keep on writing the Foley H O L Y the Foley Spirit S P I R I
share food. You can share your favorite candy. Uh, sometimes I have a hard time sharing my favorite candy. I know. Me too. I want you to think who is someone that you could share with about Jesus. And maybe you can use your frisbee and you can toss it to them. I'm going to toss it to Uncle Riddle. It's off on the screen. Oh, he dropped it. But maybe you can share your frisbee with others. Until next week, have a great week. Watch our video that's going to play next. And then wait for Uncle Dwight, who has a great Bible story for you. Bye. Sorry, we're back. Okay. Have you ever been afraid to do anything? Well, in Acts 8.26, the Holy Spirit prompts Philip to approach an Ethiopian man and share Christ with him. Come with me as we watch the next clip. Stories of the Bible. Philip and the Ethiopian. This is Philip. Hello. Who was one of Jesus' disciples. Yep. Philip preached the good news of Jesus in many places. One day, an angel of the Lord spoke to him and said, Go south down the desert road. I that. So Philip started out and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia. The man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and he was now returning to Ethiopia. He was in his carriage reading the book of Isaiah out loud. Hey there. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, Go over and walk along beside the carriage. Okay, I can do that. Philip ran over and heard the man reading and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, How can I, unless someone teaches me? Come on up here. And he urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. Those parts here. The Ethiopian asked Philip, Tell me, was Isaiah talking about himself or someone else? So beginning with this scripture in Isaiah, Philip told the Ethiopian the good news about Jesus. As they rode along, they came to some water. Wait, 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 hold on. And the Ethiopian said, look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop. Stop. And they went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away and took him to another town. The Ethiopian never saw Philip again, but went on his way rejoicing. again. Uncle Dwight here doing just a little bit of exercising with the canned goods here that I got from the food closet. You know, I've been at home a lot and so it's important that I stay active and you know, if you do a little bit of exercising, like even taking something like this and, and doing some exercising, that's, that's good for you. So I'm trying to do that, stay active while I'm at home. Um, today's video, I hope you had a chance to see it. But it's about Philip and the man from Ethiopia. Wasn't that a cool story? Uh, you know, one moment he was Philip preaching for God, and the Holy Spirit came along and took him to another place to an Ethiopian man who had just visited Jerusalem and now studying the scriptures, the Bible. And he had questions as he was reading the book of Isaiah. And God sent Philip over there to that location where that man was. And he began to share about Jesus. Because you see, Jesus is what the whole Bible is all about. The Old Testament, the New Testament, the whole book points to just one person. And that's Jesus. And so when uh, Philip shared the good news of Jesus with the Ethiopian man, he was just overjoyed and asked to be baptized. And so Philip did that. And, and he received Jesus into his heart and got baptized. 
So that was an awesome story. But, you know, God also calls us to do the same as what Philip does. You know, he wants us to go ahead and share with us those around us that he brings into our lives the good news of Jesus. Well, you might say, Uncle, what is the good news of Jesus? Well, just to summarize it, remember now, Jesus is the Son of God, and God came in person to live among us at one point, and then he went ahead and went to the cross for us, taking all of our sins, all that yuckiness, unto the cross for all mankind, unto the cross. And because of that, he was able to spiritually cleanse us from our sin, and then, but he, that death on the cross did an end there. He came back to life a few days later and we appeared to all of the followers and disciples. And, and that's great news, right? God has control over death. And then now Jesus is at the right hand of God and preparing uh, for us to be with him together, joined together in person again one day. But, you know, again, there are many benefits by receiving Jesus into our hearts. One is that um, we have all of our sins taken away, as I mentioned, right? What he did on the cross, that's great news. It's not through anything that I can do to try to remove sins, to try to be good, try to be kind. You know, those are good things, but you can never take away sin by yourself. It takes God to take it away, and Jesus takes the sin away from you, which is great news. And also... Uh, that we too are now have a clear connection with God. There's nothing that interferes you talking to God through Jesus, right? You can speak directly to God. You can speak to him as a friend. You can pray to him at any time. You can ask him for anything because he's God and nothing's impossible. So, wow, there's just the list goes on and on and on about the good news of, of Jesus. But, you know, that's something that, Again, God calls you to share with those around you. Maybe it's a relative. Maybe it's a brother and sister or cousin. Maybe it's a neighbor or somebody. But like Philip, the Holy Spirit may be asking you to share. Now you might say, Uncle Dwight, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit afraid to share uh, about Jesus. And that's okay, you know, to be afraid. I'm sure Philip was afraid. Peter definitely was afraid after Jesus was, was crucified and uh, to share the good news. But because of the Holy Spirit, remember we had that story a few Sundays ago, that he became bold and shared about Jesus uh, excitedly. So the Holy Spirit can give you that courage to share that, but also the words to share too. Uh, and sometimes you may have to just establish a connection with that person. You know, Actions can speak louder than words many times. And so do an act of kindness or just being a good listener to that person. And when you start to establish that friendship, that connection with that person, they're more than willing to listen to you. And especially if you have some great news, uh, the news of Jesus to share with them that he came and died for their sins, that they can have eternal life with God. They can experience peace and joy in their life. Wow, who wouldn't want that in their life, right? And so, you know, that's what you want to share with the other person when you have that opportunity. But, you know, just a couple questions here. Who was it that shared the good news of Jesus with you? Do you remember that? Someone shared the good news of Jesus with you. Who was that person and how did they do it? Do you remember how they shared the good news? Hmm. And the other question is, have you had a chance to share the good news of Jesus with someone already? Uh, how did you do that? Was it uh, through just a simple conversation? Was it starting with an act of kindness? Do you remember how you did it? And, you know, who is it this week that maybe God is asking you, like Philip, to share about Jesus? All right? So look for those opportunities this week as you encounter people in your household or maybe uh, people uh, next door or um, or anybody at all. Just be very open to the Holy Spirit's leading like Philip. But, you know, let's pray right now. And Uncle's going to pray that that, that uh, he gives you the courage and the people, uh, lead the people into your life, that you will have the chance to do what God is asking you to do, and that's to share the good news of Jesus. 
Let's pray. Father, my prayer is for each of the children this morning. Pray for your hands of uh, anointing, uh, like Philip, uh, fill them with the Holy Spirit power so that they can have the courage and the words and the know-how as to how they can bring the good news of Jesus into other people's lives, Lord. You desire that everyone comes to know about Jesus and what God did through his Son. And so, Lord, we want to uh, also um, share that good news that we have in our life, what Jesus did for us, and that we, that, so that others can also experience peace and joy in their life. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys. Well, good to see you guys again. Hopefully you're taking care. And until next time, we will talk again. Aloha. Bye. Aloha, family. As many of you know, we are planning to reopen NPC on July 5th at 8.30 a.m. and seats are limited. Per CDC guidelines, children under the age of two are discouraged to wear a mask and also children who are unable to remove the mask on their own. So we are asking because we love you and we love your children and we want to make sure that you guys are safe and healthy that you join us at nanikapono.online.church on Sundays at 8.30 a.m. If you have any questions, please feel free to call me, give me a call, my, you can email me at any time. But again, we do love you and we do want to make sure that you and your family are healthy. Okay, so take care and God bless.